In this tutorial, we'll be creating this inner glowing animations using shape layers in After Effects. So once again, I was inspired by one of Google's promotion videos where they had similar animations and I wanted to try and recreate it. So first we're gonna animate between two shapes. So I'm gonna start with selecting my rounded rectangle tool and I'll just draw a shape like so. Now, once again, once you still hold your shape layer, you can use your arrow keys up and down to choose how rounded you want the corners to be. So if I go down here, you can see that the edges are getting closer together, holding it up. We're basically rounding it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a shape like this. I'll select it, control home to center it to my composition. And I'm going to draw another shape, which is going to be an ellipse here. Going from my anchor point here, I'll hold down control alt shift to create a symmetrical shape and I'm just gonna grab it like so, basically creating a sphere inside. Let's go ahead and disable the fill layer on both of my shapes here, so we only see the strokes. And you can increase the size of your stroke right here. And what I'm gonna do now is animate between the two shapes. Now, if you go into the ellipse path here, you see there is no path animation. So if I right-click it, convert to Bezier path, I can now animate the path just like a mask. So if I select one of my points, I can move it around. So I'm gonna do the same thing on my rectangle here, convert it to a Bezier path, and I'm gonna set two keyframes on both of the shapes. Now you can choose which one you want to start animating from. So let's say I'm gonna start with the ellipse one. I'm gonna grab the rectangle keyframe and paste it to my ellipse path. Let's remove the rectangle. And what we've got now is this messy looking thing, but it's basically transitioning between two masks. So to fix this issue, we're gonna go to the ending here, grab my mask here, select the path, and usually this vertice works for me. It depends on the shape you're working with, so try to play around with it and right click one of your points here, mask and shape, set first vertex. And as you can see, that fixed our issue here and it's animating pretty smoothly. I'm gonna select these two keyframes, hit F9, go into my graph and just speed things up here, create sort of a speed ramp and maybe move this a bit closer. So we've got this nice looking animation here, morphing between the two shapes. You can also do this with a logo or a text layer. I've also got some tutorials about that. Now, in order to add the color inside, we need to use a mask. So let's rename this one to stroke and duplicate it, we'll rename this one to fill. We'll go back here and enable the fill layer and you can see that it sticks around. But one thing I wanna do here is go into my path and I wanna make sure my path is aligned with this one. So I can grab the pick whip here and connect the two. So now if I go into my stroke layer, move one of the points, you can see that the fill layer is following along. This is just in case you wanna modify it later on and you don't wanna animate both layers obviously so they match. Now let's collapse these layers and we'll duplicate the fill layer one more time and we'll name this mask. Now let me just change the color here so we can see it better. And what I'm gonna do on this layer is disable the stroke. So right here, disable it so we only have inside the fill. What we're gonna use this for is take the fill layer and we'll make it a track mat to this mask. And then I'm going to invert it. So essentially, if I isolate my layer here, and then I'll add a fast blur on my mask layer, I am now softening the edges only inside the shape. So maybe that's too much here. I'll set it to something like 15. We can adjust this later on, but everything here follows along the shape, and now we can start adding the color. So let's pre-compose everything here. We'll call this shape, and I'll add a new solid for my color. We'll call this gradient. Now, I usually like to use the full color gradient, so I'll just set four random colors here, like so. And I'm going to alt-click my point one and type in wiggle, open bracket, 0 0.5 and comma 1000. And then I'm going to copy this expression, alt-click point two, paste it, and basically do the same for all four points. So this basically creates this variation of dancing colors and I'm going to use the gradient layer to be a track mat to the shape layer. So now if I play this back, you can see that we get this inner glow here and we can increase this by adjusting the blur. So if we go in here, set the blur radius to maybe 25, 
it's going to update here and we're going to receive more edges. And with the gradient animation, you can see it creates an interesting vibrant look of many colors. Now, let's say I want to animate a stroke like this one in the same type of way. The only issue with this shape is we don't have an inside fill to basically mask around. The approach is going to be similar, but a little bit different. So what I'm going to do on this layer is just add a quick trim path just to animate it in. So we'll set the end to zero, animate it from zero to 100. And we'll go down here and animate the starting from zero to 100 as well. Select them, hit off nine, and we just got the basic stroke animation coming in and going out. Just one thing I want to add here is round my corners so they're not sharp like here. And we'll do this by going into the stroke under line cap, we'll change it to round cap. So it just smooth things out here in case you want to. Now let's go ahead and add the glowing. So to do this, we're going to use another stroke layer. I'll duplicate this one and we'll rename it to glow. Now I'm going to do the same thing as previously. I'm going to connect the paths just in case we move them around. So going from my glow layer, connect the paths here. And on my glow layer, let's increase the stroke so we can actually see it. And I'll make it red just for the demonstration here. Drop it below. Let's just make sure it works. So once I move the main layer, the glow will also update. Now the issue here, as you can see, the stroke can only grow on both sides. So sadly, we can have it grow only on the right or left. So to fix this, we're going to create a mask. To do this, I'm going to grab the stroke layer, duplicate it and I'll rename it to mask. Now, if I select my pen tool, select the last dot here, I can basically continue drawing on and I'm just gonna draw a shape around it. So we'll connect it here and we'll go into the shape here and I'm going to enable back the fill. Now let's make this white. So I'm basically creating a mask around it. The only thing I need to disable here is get rid of the trim path so it's constantly there. So if you play this back, you can see it's basically just a simple mask. Now I'm going to go into my glow layer and we'll set it as a track mat to the mask. Let's invert it and now we've got it only on one side. We can also invert it back if we want it on the top. Let's just go with this one for now. And just like before, we're going to add a fast blur on the glow layer. Increase it to something like 15. You can also increase the stroke size here if you want more or less of the layer. And what we can do here just to soften the edge is add a fast blur on my mask layer as well. Maybe set it to something like three, just so it's not as sharp on the edges here. Maybe just a bit less too. And we can also adjust the mask sort of going like so, so it's more rounded. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing. Let's pre-compose it name this stroke and I'm going to grab the gradient from before, paste it into this comp and make it a track mat to the stroke. So now you can see the shape is being animated here. The only issue I see here is the glow is making it go back a bit here. So I'm actually going to go back and set it to something like one. Now I think the glow is a little too much here. So I'm going to go here and actually lower my opacity to maybe 60 maybe decrease the stroke as well. So I just want it to be a slight color around it. Now, one thing I've added in the preview you've seen in the beginning is a simple deep glow effect. Now this is a paid plugin, but if we apply a deep glow on our stroke layer, just decrease it a bit, it obviously adds a really nice touch and makes the color more vibrant. Then we'll pre-compose this whole thing and duplicate it. And on my second layer here, I'm going to add a fast blur once again and just blur it out completely and lower the opacity to maybe 40. You can also move it around just a bit here. So this is how you can create these type of effects. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.